Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have we have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 100. And 66. Day, day 3166. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 166. We are in the process of solving the problem from day practice test number 2 towards the very end of the book on page number 494. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page number 494 and on that page you will see a chart which we are going to reproduce here. It has four elements, or rather seven elements, seven diseases which I have listed here. The first one is what they're calling endotoxin. We don't have to worry about what it is, but E for endotoxin. Then we have two types of asthma. They tell you actually what two types are. Again, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to asthma. We're just going to call it asthma one and asthma two. Then we have hay fever, sneezing, wheezing. Again, type one and type two. And here the and then we we are told how many people suffer from these seven elements in these two groups. Group one has has 300 people in it. The, the, Make sure that you understand that the group sizes are different. This is this group has 300 people, group 2 has 400 people. Whenever they give you something like this, the group sizes, the sample sizes are always different, obviously. So here are the elements. We have endotoxin, then we have asthma 1, we have asthma 2, we have hay fever, we have sneezing, and finally we have wheezing 1 and wheezing 2. And here are the numbers. For group 1, the percentages are as follows. 14, 3, 2. 14, 3, 2. 4, 8, 5. 4, 8, and 5, 2. And then we have 21, 4, 3. 21, 4, 3. 10, 11. 10, 11. And finally, 6 and 5. There we go. In other words, in other words, group two has 400 people in it, of which, out of those 400 people, five percent suffer from second type of wheezing. Group one has 300 people in it, and two percent of those 300 people suffer from type two of asthma, and so on and so forth. Let's answer the question. Now that we, now that we have our diseases, and now that you know what these symbols mean, we no longer need this part here. So I'm going to erase it. Let's look at first question, number 17. It says, it says, number of people, in group two, number of people in group two, who have, who have hay fever, is, is how much greater than is how much greater than the number of people who have a fever in group one. One more time, number of people who have hay fever in group 2 is how much greater than the number of people who have hay fever in group 1. Let's see how many people have hay fever in group 2. So here's our group 2 and here's the hay fever. It looks like 10%. 10% of people have, so group 2 here is 10% of 400. And the question is, the number of people who have hay fever in group 2, number of people who have hay fever in group 2 is how much greater than the number of people who have hay fever in group 1. Let's find out what group, how many people have hay fever in group 1. In group 1, again, we have 4%, but 4% of what? 4% of 300. Minus 4% of 300. It's a very straightforward, simple question. What is 10% of 400? 10% of 400, of course, is 40. 4% of 300. What is 1% of 300? 1% of 300 is 3. 
if 1% of 300 is 3, 4% is going to be 3 times 4. In other words, 40 minus 12. 40 minus 10 would have been 30. 40 minus 12 is going to be 28. 28 is our answer. Very simple, as I said, very straightforward question. So simple, in fact, that 90% of people who took the exam had absolutely no trouble with it. They got it right. Let's look at number two. Well, question number 18. Question number 18. I don't think we need this chart anymore. You have it. You have it in your book. You, you can copy it from here. Let's look at number 18. Number 18 says, what is the, what is the median, what is the median number of people in group 2 who have We have one of these seven elements. Now, to be honest with you, I don't quite understand the question, but we'll do the best we can. The question really doesn't make much sense to me. I don't think it's very, very well written question. I don't like the way it's written. I don't like the way it's worded. First thing we're going to do is because they're looking for median, first because they're looking for median in group two, and we're given different percentages for different diseases. Since we need the medium we need to arrange the percentages in order. So these are these are percentages. I'm, I'm not going to write percentage sign next to every one of them. If you look at the group two and just arrange them from least to greatest, we have three, four, five, six, and then we have 10, 11, and 24. 10, 11, and 24. These are percentages, do you understand? Percentages of the people, percentages of people suffering from various diseases, very one of the seven diseases in group two. Since there are seven of them, median is right here, six percent. Six percent of what? Six percent of number of people in group two. Six percent of number of people in group two, which I believe was, we were told either 300 or 400. It was 400. Six percent of 400. Six percent of 400. What is, what is one percent of 400? One percent of 400. 1% of 400 is 4. If 1% of 400 is 4, 6% is going to be 6 times 4. The answer is 24. And as I told you before, I don't quite know what they mean by that. Oh, I forgot to put the percentile for 7, 18 and 19. Give me a second. I want to put it down also in my notes because I want to know it. 18 and 19. Oh, 18 is 82%. Interesting. And 19 to 6. All right. So, 82 percent of people, 82 percent of people got it right. And I can tell you, I would probably not be one of those 82 percent. I would probably be in the minority of 18 percent because I don't quite like the question. Let's look at number 19. It says for group one, for for group one, the number of people, the the number of people who suffer from first type of vising is how much greater than those who suffer from second type of reason who suffer from Second type of reasoning. The number of people in group one who suffer from 
visiting the first type and the second type, how people who suffer from first type is how much greater than the people who suffer in the second type. If you look at the chart, you will see if you're dealing with group one, and in in group one, in group one, the number of number of number of people who suffer from first type of visiting, we are told, is five percent. Five percent of three hundred. And in, in second group, and the people who suffer from second type rather, is two percent. Two percent again of the of the same number of, of three hundred, because it's the same group, obviously. So the difference is difference is three percent. Difference is three percent. Three percent of what? Three percent of three hundred. Three percent of three hundred. 3% of 300, 1% of 300 is 3, 3% of 300 is going to be 9. And that was my answer. That was my answer. And after that, as I looked at the answer choices, and being quick that I am, I realized that something has gone awry. Something doesn't seem to sit right. So I went back and reread the question. And that is now what the question is asking in the book. I, I misread it. It does not say in the book, it does not say for group one, the number of people who suffer from first type of visiting is how much greater than those who suffer from second type of visiting. It doesn't say that. It says the number of people who suffer from first type of visiting is what percentage greater? Is 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 what percentage greater than those who suffer from two? So the difference is nine. The difference is nine. The difference is nine. But the question is nine. What is that as a percentage of our point of reference? Our point of reference here is the group one. We're comparing the group two people, the number of people who suffer, the number of people who suffer from from visiting, visiting first type, type one, is how much greater? Well, we know it's nine greater compared to second type. How many people suffer from second type? Well, five percent. 1% of 300 is 1% of 300 is 3, 5% is 15. Again, 1% is 3, 2% is 26, and that's how we got. Obviously, that's how we got 6. But that's how we got 9. This difference now is what? Per, what does that represent as a percentage of 6? Because it says people who suffer from first type is how much greater than people who suffer from the second type. So it is the second type that we're comparing with. That's our point of reference. This number is how much greater in terms of percentage compared to this group. So the difference is 9. How much greater is 9 in terms of percentage? There, that's the difference. And we're looking for percentage difference. So this 9 is how much greater than 6. That's very straightforward. 9 is simply 6 plus 6 plus 3. 6 plus 3. So that gives us 6 over 6 plus 3 over 6. We shouldn't have to do all this childish thing. It is 100% plus 50 percent. In other words, in other words, 9 is 150 percent more than 6. Of course, 9 is 160 percent, 150 percent more than 6 because 9 is made up of 6 and a 3. And 6 represents 100 percent of 6 and the other 3 represents the 50 percent of 6. It is 150 percent greater. The answer is 150 percent and in this question, about half the people, 56 percent of people had no trouble getting it right. That was number 19. This was the very last one. Number 20. In number 20, we are looking for the ratio. Ratio of, we are looking for the ratio. It says, what is the ratio? What is the ratio of the number of people? The number. What is the ratio of the number of people who suffer? from sneezing in group 2 to 
all the people, to all the people who suffer from sneezing. And when we say all the people, of course all the people only simply means the two groups, because we only have two groups. If you have seven groups, you would have added up number of people who suffer from sneezing from all seven of the groups. We only have two groups. So let's do it now, shall we? Now what is going to be on the top? Well, what's, what's going to be on the top is what it says here. It's the ratio of number of people, number of people, who suffer from sneezing in group 1. And what's going to be on the bottom? Well, what it says here, to all the people, to all the people who suffer from sneezing. Let's do it on the top. So, how do we figure out the number of people who suffer from sneezing in group 1? I look at the chart and it will tell you. The chart tells you, if you look under sneezing, it tells you for group 1. I'm so sorry, it's not group 1, it's group 2. Number of people who suffer from sneezing in group 2. And it's already gone as to what I had written earlier. I don't remember any, uh, what I actually wrote down. So, if I did write down on the blackboard group 1, if I wrote down G1, I meant to say group 2. It says, what's the ratio of number of people who suffer from sneezing in group 2 to all the people who suffer from sneezing? It's group 2 we're looking for. And if you look at the chart under sneezing, we'll find out that it is 11%, 11% of the people, people in group 2 suffer from sneezing. 11% of what? 11% of oh, whatever the size of the group is, which is 400. What's going to go on the bottom? Well, the number of people who suffer from sneezing in group 1 plus the number of people who suffer from sneezing in group 2. What percentage of people suffer from sneezing in group 1? Again, if you look at the chart in front of you in the book, you will see that it is 8%. It is 8%, therefore it is 8% of 300 because there are 300 people in group 1. This is the group people who suffer from sneezing in group 1 plus the 11% that you see on the top there, 11% of 400. These are the same people from group 2 who suffer from sneezing. And that's what we're looking for. Let's do it together, shall we? 11% of 44. What is 10% of 44? 10% of 44 is 40. And 1% of 1% of 400, 10% of 400 is what I meant to say. What is 10% of 400? 10% of 400 is 40. And what is 1% of 400? 1% of 400 is 4. 4 plus 40 would be 44. 11% of 400 is 44. That's our top. What is 1% of 300? 1% of 300 is just 3. Therefore, 8% is going to be 3 times 8. And we could have done the same thing on the top, if you like. 1% 1 1 of 400 is 4. 1% of 400 is 4. So, 11% is going to be 11 times 4. But same thing here, 44. It's the same thing. Let's do it out. So 11 times 4 is 44. And here we get 24. 24 plus 44. 24 plus 44. 4 plus 4 is 8. And six plus, uh, 2 plus 4 is 6. There you go. That's our answer. We can leave it like this if you want to. And they will accept it just, just, just fine. Because you have to put, uh, put in your own answer in the computer and they will accept it just fine. If the answer happens to be 50 over 100, you don't have to reduce it if you don't want to. If you put in 50 over 100, they will accept it. If you, if you put in 50 over 100 as 3 over 6, they will accept it. If you put it as 1 over 2, they will accept it. If you put it in as, put, put it in as 1 million over 2 million, they will accept it. All, form, all equivalent fractions are accepted. Do you understand? So you can leave it like this if you wanted to or you can reduce it. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. How do we know that well, top is definitely divisible by 4? How do we know 68 is divisible by 4? Because 68 is simply made up of 60 plus 8. And 60 has 15 fours. 15 fours are 60. And 8 has 2 fours. So if you divide top and bottom by 4, 4 has 1 four, this 4 has 1 four. How many fours does 6 have? 
6 is 1 4. 6 is 1 4. After we take away 4 from the 6, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. And 28 has 7 4. So as you can see, 15 plus 2 is 17. So the answer is 11, 11 over 17. That's the most reduced form. You cannot reduce it anymore because they have no other common factors. Do you understand? They cannot possibly have any any common factors because it turns out they are both prime numbers. We cannot reduce them anymore. So you can put it in like this or you can leave it like 48, 44 or 68 and they will accept it as I said just, just, just fine. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now. Oh, I forgot to give you the percentage here in case you're curious. About two-thirds of people got this question right, 66%.